This is an immensely popular car in India, the Innova. And we did bring you an exclusive test drive earlier on the show, but the India spec version is here. This time around, there's an automatic too. We've got both the manual and the automatic with us. We're going to take a test drive and tell you what it's like. Now, I'm not going into lengthy details about the way this new Innova, which carries the suffix Krista, looks because you've seen it before on the show. So it suffices to say that it's more edgy than before, especially the bolder front end and the more contoured look overall. The Innova has always managed to cut the barrier between personal and commercial mobility with more ease than any other. Its immense popularity had to do with the fact that it had the ubiquitous third row to carry the extra passengers. Well, we're getting into the earlier Innova was a bit of a pain because you had to yank the seat forward, you had to pull it down and then you had a small little niche to get in. This one is really easy. Watch. One hand, simple tumble seat, climbing in, there's loads of room to get in. And once you're in, the third row actually feels a little more spacious. Yes, you still do sit a little knees up, but it's better than before. But that's not the only area of improvement on the inside. Overall, there is a huge leap forward. On the inside, the Innova looks far more rich and premium than before. There's this lovely swooping line to the dash. Underneath it runs this single metallic strip that ends in a U across both sides. It also accents and highlights the bottom. Now, especially for someone like me who wears reading glasses, very often I find that when I'm driving, you know, I'm struggling to see the screen and everything below it. But here it's not like that. The font is really nice. The touchscreen is easy to use. The angle of the screen is just perfect so it doesn't have glare. And even the AC controls are beautifully placed on this slightly angled portion of the dash. So it faces up towards the driver and you don't have to struggle underneath here to operate them. The dials are nice and now they have this 3D effect which looks especially nice when it's lit up. There are loads of cubby holes and cup holders. In fact, the cabin can hold up to 20 bottles. There is a dual glove box and the top one offers a cooled function. The seats are bigger and more comfortable. And there is an additional display between the dials now that offers up a host of functions that can be controlled from the steering mounted buttons. Boot space is also a little more than before with all seats up and you can flip down the third and middle rows to open up more room. From the boot to under the bonnet, the Innova now comes with two engines, a 2.4-litre mated to a 5-speed manual and the 2.8-litre that's mated to a 6-speed auto. Now I'm driving the 2.8-litre 174hp version of the engine. And this engine actually makes the car that is now heavier feel lighter to drive. It just masks its speed so well, you get up to triple digit speeds very easily. And this is something that's drastically different from the older Innova because, you know, it tended to feel laboured beyond a point. Now the key really here is this, the auto box. Well, it's the first time in an Innova. And now owners can really get behind the wheel and it's going to make it much easier for them to drive. Not only is it easy, it's actually quite pleasurable to drive too. This engine mated to the six-speed auto is quick and there's no doubt about that. Overtakes are easy and it just brings on the power whenever you demand it. But we did find that the auto box came with its nuances too. Even if you put your foot down slightly, you don't have to jam your foot down. Even light accelerations make the box shift down and it pushes the engine up the revs, making it audible. The result is that it actually makes the engine feel like it's working non-stop, when in effect, it has more than enough power to do what you ask of it. Putting it into manual mode does reduce the problem. Now, even though I say audible, this engine is pretty refined. So it's not something that's intrusive at all. I think overall cabin refinement has improved as well. You know, it feels much better insulated. It shuts out engine noise and outside sounds much better than before.
Now, especially since this gets up to triple digit speeds and settles down into a cruise quite comfortably, I just wish that the front end felt a little bit more tethered down because this doesn't give you the kind of confidence at high speeds that you would like. The nose tends to feel a little light. I think that lightness is accentuated by the steering wheel, which feels really light at high speeds. And if you can see this dead zone around center, just doesn't inspire confidence, especially when you're gunning it down a highway. The flip side of this is though overall the steering is feeling lighter, it's just not variable enough. So at low speeds, it still has a heavy feel. Well, I've chosen to give you the experience from behind the wheel in the automatic version because should you choose to drive, this would really be the easier one. But most owners will be spending their time in the back seat and I'm going to get into the manual version and get into the back seat to tell you what that feels like. Now, Toyota engineers realized that most of the owners of the Innova actually spend their time in the back seat, so they've given a lot of focus this time around to this area. They've made it feel far more luxury, more plush, they've given it more features. There's a table that's now on the back of the front seat, so I can have my coffee or have a small meal really easily. There's storage area for my phone um, in a little pocket over here, so that's nifty. There's cup holders that fold out from the side of the seat, so you know, you just use them when you want and when you don't, you can fold them away nicely and leave this area unimpeded. You can actually use it for more storage. What I liked as well was the U-shaped silver embellishment on the roof line, which was there for the ambient lighting. The AC vents are now housed there and you have the electronic control now instead of the manual one for the AC. But the thing is that, you know, in the earlier Innova, you sat in the back seat, blasted the AC and it bore down on you and you were cooled in a second. This one now has gone further away from the passenger, so it takes a little while more to get cooler in this back seat. The black leather seats we had on the top end variant didn't exactly help either, and cooling down after a break in the 42 degree heat of Kolapur took a while. But other than that, it's hard to fault the captain seats, which are supremely comfortable. Space is also a little more than before, making an already great place to be even better. So truly a first-class experience in this row of the Innova and what adds to it is the ride quality. Now the ride quality of the Innova was always really faultless and it feels like that even now. You're absolutely in comfort in this back seat. Cruising along a highway will be really, really leisurely. It does feel slightly firmer and gets a bit jittery uh, over sharper bumps at lower speeds. But honestly, I'm picking needles out of a haystack over here you really can't complain about the right quality. But me being me, couldn't spend too much time without my hands on the wheel. So I thought I'd get behind the wheel and see how it feels out on the road as well. And in fact, I can say it feels quite different. The biggest change initially is that it's a lot smoother, a lot more refined. And it's only when you push it right up to the red line does it become audible. The engine feels like it has a spring in its step. There are an option of modes too. Eco for the ones who want to eke out the best efficiency, normal for the regular runs, and power for those who want a little more. In the power mode, there is a strong surge around the 2000 RPM mark and the engine really feels powerful. To put it into perspective, the earlier Innova took 17.5 seconds to the 100 mark and this one takes just 13.11. What's nice is the linear build-up of power in the normal mode, which starts as low as 1400 RPM, maintaining its drivable character. I think the biggest change really is at the top end, you know, when you're cruising out on a highway, this engine now does it so much more effortlessly. In the earlier one, you were sort of searching for that sixth gear because the engine was straining and making a lot of noise. Here, it's cruising along silently. After a long 12-hour stint in all the seats of the Innova, I came away impressed and still feeling like I hadn't spent that many hours on the road, which is really testimony to what the Innova is, a dependable, uber-comfortable travel companion. 
Well, like I said in the beginning, the Innova was always immensely popular, but it did have its weaknesses, performance and refinement being the main two. But Toyota have addressed these weaknesses and turned them into strengths with the new Innova Crystal. In fact, I'd say they've really raised the bar high and they're at the top of their game as far as performance and refinement are concerned. Not only that, they're offering you luxurious interiors, they're packed it with features and this good car has just gotten better on every level. But unfortunately, the good things in life don't come cheap. So the top-end Innova will cost you upward of 20 lakh.